Hello, this is Tony Blazer for the Motocross Vault presented by Blinzall. If you're in the market for some high-quality racing oil for your two-stroke or four, make sure you go to Blinzall.com and use our discount code VAULT20 to save 20% at checkout. Thank you for all the support. This is Hannah. This is Billy. <laughs> this is Baby Boo Boo. Jesus. Welcome to the Motocross Vault! <laughs> That was terrible. It was not terrible! Hello and welcome back to the Motocross Vault. My name is Tony Blazer, and what this video is going to look back at is the history of Honda's iconic 4 Tracks 250R, a machine that was only built for four years in the late 80s, from 1986 to 1989. The run of the machine is not nearly as long-lived as its reputation, its impact on the industry. Long after the four tracks went out of production, it was continued to be raced for probably another at least 15 years competitively uh, before the four strokes finally started to take over in the early 2000s. The 250R was an incredibly successful machine in so many ways, and even today, I think you can probably get aftermarket replacements for just about everything you want because there are so many of them still uh, being used just for pleasure and even racing to this very day. Really, really great machine and iconic design. Unfortunately, it was a victim, I think, of some of the pressure towards ATVs in the 80s where they were getting blamed for mini crashes where people were putting kids on them that didn't belong. I think this quad in, in particular was an excellent handling machine. I had an 87. Certainly a, a very light, easy-to-ride quad. I don't think it was any death machine by any means, but you know, a lot of people put people who didn't belong on three-wheelers on them, and I think these quads kind of got uh, wrapped up in all that. And under a lot of industry pressure, a lot of lawsuits and stuff, caused Honda to discontinue this machine far before it probably should have. If they had continued to build it through the 90s, I think it would have you know, been just as successful moving forward. But unfortunately, uh, the four tracks only lived these four years, and that certainly probably has something to do with the fact that people think of it so fondly. It's one of those things where it wasn't around long enough to wear out its welcome, and the 250R is still an iconic and beloved machine overall. If you like this sort of thing, you can certainly check out some of the other videos I've done on my channel. I've done a history of the ATC 250R, its three-wheeled cousin, and I've done several retrospectives on other motorcycle and uh, off-road machines, including the Honda Odyssey if you're into ATVs. Uh, if you'd like to check that out on my channel, you will find them there. If you'd like to support what I do, uh, I do have Motocross Vault merch available, including a 4Tracks 250R design I did uh, a little while back. I have all kinds of machines from ATVs to motocross bikes uh, from all the different manufacturers. And I have done a few custom designs as well. So if you have a particular machine you have in mind you'd like me to do, uh, hit me up uh, in the comment section or you can uh, shoot me an email at themotocrossvault at gmail.com and I'll be happy to see if I can come up with something for you. So here without further ado is the history of Honda's 4Trax 250R. The story of the Honda 4Trax 250R started way back in 1981 with the introduction of the world's first high-performance ATV, the 1981 ATC 250R. This machine, while certainly not particularly sporty looking by today's standards, was a revolution in 81. Powered by a 248cc air-cooled, reed-inducted, two-stroke motor, this machine was an absolute revelation in 1981. It used a single shock in the rear, it had uh, telescopic forks up front that were very small for the size and weight of the machine, but certainly a far cry from what you had on most ATCs at the time, which was absolutely no suspension. Uh, the manual clutch uh, gave it a great deal more control than a typical uh, three-wheeler of the time. And of course, the two-stroke motor, while not fast by Honda CR250R standards, was way more powerful than the ATC 185s and smaller machines that were common at the time. This was an absolutely revolutionary machine uh, back in 81. The front forks put out 6.7 inches of travel with the rear offering 4.3 inches of travel. Of course, a lot of your suspension was in those balloony tires. Uh, again, if you look at this machine now, it looks pretty modest in terms of its um, overall performance envelope. But again, when you compare it with the machines that were available when it was introduced, it was a absolute game changer. Now, Honda would have the ATC market in the high-performance realm to its own uh, for about three years until Kawasaki introduced the first Takati uh, in 1984, which was actually a little more high-performance in many ways than the ATC, 
1984, Honda was still using an a air-cooled motor. The Kawasaki introduced liquid cooling to the class, uh, a little more high performance. But the Honda still had a lot of advantages in terms of handling. They did a great job with making these bikes, um, or these trikes, I should say, uh, handle very well, uh, at least in comparison to their peers at the time. The next major change in the high-performance ATV arena comes in 1985 with the introduction of Suzuki's Quad Racer. Uh, this machine, while not as fast as the new 85 ATC 250R, which got liquid cooling and a great deal more power in 85, um, they did not have as good a suspension as the ATC, uh, did not have as much power as the ATC or the Takati, which was even more powerful than the Honda. But the advantage that it had in terms of stability uh, was just hard to ignore. Uh, Suzuki had been a pioneer with the first four-wheelers on, you know, much more modest machines than the quad racers a few years before this, and it was pretty apparent from the very beginning that um, adding that extra wheel made a huge difference in the overall handling of the machine and the ability, certainly for people of lesser skill, uh, to control it. Now, a lot of people would tell you, you know, three-wheelers are not particularly dangerous. I know I've ridden quite a few, uh, quite a few when I was younger, and I had a habit of crashing them quite a bit particularly in off-camber situations or if you're caught uh, by a turn that you didn't see coming or something. it's It takes so much more skill to manhandle a three-wheeler than a four-wheeler. Of course, any ATV you know requires skill to, to control it, but the three-wheeler is definitely much higher on that curve in terms of uh, making sure you maintain control, particularly at high speeds. You know, at low speeds, not so much, but once the speeds ramp up, the four-wheeler just gave it a huge advantage, particularly like on uh, jumps and what have you. If you hit a jump on a, a three-wheeler and you get a little cockeyed, that's really a bad situation. On a four-wheeler, uh, it's not nearly as severe. Uh, the machine has a greater ability to overcome those things. So when Suzuki introduced this quad racer in 1985, it had the market all to itself. All the other manufacturers are still doing three-wheelers. Yamaha had the Tri-Z 250. Kawasaki, of course, had the Takati. And Honda had its class-leading ATC 250R, uh, which was, again, all new in 85. And these machines, while very, very good in many realms, uh, were quickly losing out to the quads just because of that extra wheel advantage. For 1986, Honda decided to join the quad revolution by introducing their own four-wheeler, the all-new TRX 250R four tracks. This machine used a similar engine to what was found in the three-wheeled version, uh, which in 1986 was a 246cc two-stroke single. The motor did not have a power valve. None of these 250Rs ever actually got the power valve system. The motor certainly is in a milder state of tune than what you would have found on the CRs at the time. Uh, some of that was due to, obviously, the machine being quite choked off in stock form. All these ATVs come with uh, much more restrictive mufflers. You know, they're used for uh, riding in the woods and on the dunes and what have you, not just a competition-only machine. And the motor, of course, also has heavier flywheel, different gear ratios. You know, obviously the motorcycle weighs way less than any of these ATCs or uh, four-wheelers, uh, so they're going to have a little different state of tune. The motor is certainly considered high performance, but it was not as advanced as what Kawasaki was using in 1986 on their Ducati, which actually had the KIPP system uh, out of the KX motocrossers. Uh, these uh, Honda engines at the time were always more geared towards low to mid power, flexibility, had a very wide, smooth power band that maybe weren't quite as uh, high performance as what Kawasaki was doing at the time. The motor in the four tracks, while similar to the ATC 250R, uh, is not exactly the same. Interestingly, Honda chose to detune the motor slightly on the four-wheeler. That was said to be at the time due to the added drag of the front wheel. I'm not sure how a machine having more weight and more drag means you want to add less power. Um, I'm sure it was some reliability concern. I don't know. I'm not, not positive on that part of it. seems like a strange choice. But in 1986, the uh, three-wheeler actually had the more powerful of the two engines. Uh, mechanically, though, they're very similar. It's the same basic engine in most ways. The suspension on the 250R four tracks is all new here in 1986. It offers 7.9 inches of travel in the front uh, with dual shocks and 9 inches in the rear tied to a ProLink uh, linkage rear suspension system. Interestingly, the 250R three-wheeler in 86 had 9.8 inches up front uh, with their 39mm uh, front forks and a full 9.8 inches in the rear. So actually the, the trike had more travel as well. And the four-wheel, of course, is substantially heavier. The uh, 250R three-wheeler came in at 291 pounds stock, and this four-tracks was rated at 328. Now, this machine certainly is... 
a beautiful bike. I love the bodywork this year. Interesting, very different than the the three wheel version. Three wheel version is much closer in terms of colors to uh, what you would have found on the CR motocrossers at the time. And when Honda went with the four wheeler. I'm not sure why they went with a totally different color scheme here. The white, red, white, and blue is certainly iconic and beautiful, but uh, doesn't really look anything like what you would have found, you know, Ricky Johnson riding that year. Uh, in 1986, uh, this is the only four-wheeler alongside the Quad Racer. Uh, the Quad Racer in 86 is very similar to 85. So all the other machines in the ATC high-performance class are three-wheelers. You have the Tri-Z 250, uh, Kawasaki Staccati, and of course the ATC 250R going head-to-head with the Quad Racer and the four tracks. In pretty much every shootout I read in 1986, the quad racer uh, was rated behind the four tracks in a fairly close running between the two. Uh, the four tracks really had an advantage this year in terms of suspension. The front shocks were rated the best in the class. Overall suspension was excellent on this quad, and it had less bump steer too, which is a thing that some quads are known for. If you hit a bump with one wheel, it would kind of try and uh, yank the bars out of your hands and uh, react to that. And when Honda designed the frame for the four tracks, they tried to engineer out that bump steer so you have much less uh problem with steering you know in the rough and the quad racer was known to have a good bit more of this in this early era particularly than the honda did really the only beef with the honda in terms of handling is uh, this first generation of four tracks is known to spin out it has a fairly long wheelbase and uh, the combination of the stock tires and the chassis dynamics caused it to kind of spin out in turns it wasn't as stable and like high speed sliding as the quad racer was um, really it's kind of the only thing you see anybody complaining about in terms of the overall handling the quad is of course slower than the uh, three-wheel versions uh, but it was faster than the suzuki which was in a very mild state of tune this first quad racer uses a I believe a motor out of uh, like a European dual sport was the basis for it. It's certainly not like an RM engine by any means, and it's not particularly fast. I remember riding one uh, back to back with my blaster, which I had. This is back in the late 80s, and being kind of surprised how the quad racer what didn't feel like night and day faster than that uh, little play bike Yamaha it was definitely uh, not particularly impressive in terms of that. The new quad turned out to be a tremendous sales success for Honda. They actually sold 35,000 of these in 1986, which was a very strong number. Of course, overall ATV sales uh, were very strong in the late 70s and early 80s. One thing it is worth mentioning is the ATVs in general were coming under a great deal of scrutiny at this point. You had the infamous uh, 60 Minutes piece talking about ATV safety, and the three-wheelers were coming under a lot of heat for being inherently unstable and dangerous. And it was clear that Honda saw the writing on the wall there, and they were moving towards four-wheelers across their line. So this 86 year would be the last year for the ATC version. Uh, moving forward, you would only have the high-performance four tracks as the performance alternative in the Honda lineup. For 1987, the 4Trax 250R is back with a minor list of updates. Visually, the machines are almost identical. Just as in 86, you have a blue and a red combo. I personally had uh, the blue initially and actually ended up buying uh, a tank off eBay in red and swapping my personal 87 over to the red. Um, I thought they both looked great. And it is cool in this 86 and 87 year that you can swap back and forth between the two. Other than that, really, the only difference is the fact that the 4Trax the logo has moved from the front fender to the seat here for 87. Still uses the, uh, I think, cool gold rims and gold swing arm, which is very iconic for mid-80s Hondas. Certainly a interesting look that kind of uh, you know sets the machine in the period that it was designed for. This is another great year for the 4Trax. Uh, there are some minor updates here. They changed the front motor mount slightly. They also updated the engine here for 87, although it looks visually the same on the outside. It's still a liquid-cooled two-stroke. has a six-speed transmission. Counterbalance are in it to minimize vibration. Uh, there is a new cylinder. They have a longer connecting rod this year by 5 millimeters, and they repositioned the uh, wrist pin inside the piston offset that as well by five millimeters so you kept the same bore and stroke as 87 just to kind of change the mechanical advantage of the uh, crankshaft uh, the motor itself is a little different internally but it doesn't run much different on the on the track or trail pretty much everybody who rode this thing said it basically ran exactly the same as 87 not a huge night and day difference overall the exhaust is a little quieter here for 87 apparently they had some new uh, sound rules so maybe the internal differences in the motor kind of offset the choked off exhaust, but it doesn't seem that most of the tests, you know, have, can notice any significant difference in terms of the way the four tracks runs. I had this 87. I loved it. It was a great overall quad. Uh, these machines are really electric. The motor doesn't run certainly anything like a, you know, CR250, whatever the time. 
it's much more mellow than that. Certainly much more like an enduro bike or something. Uh, there's no hit. Of course, there's no power valve. This one doesn't use the ATAC or the a Honda PowerPort system or any of that. It's a very simple motor overall, no case read or anything like that as well. Uh, the motor itself is very wide in terms of the power band. It's low to mid mainly, not a lot of top end unless you open it up. Now, I do think you can get a lot of power out of these quads if you open them up. I mean, that exhaust alone is like a boat anchor. It's super heavy duty, very quiet. The, the, the quad barely makes any noise when it's running. Uh, and it's super easy to ride. It's a great trail machine. There's no hit per se. It just kind of chugs along and it'll, it'll pull really, really low down in the RPMs, which is great for, you know, off-road use. You got to figure these machines were used much more uh, probably off-road play bikes than actual motocross. So the engines need to be much more versatile than a CR. And it, it shows in the way the, the quad runs. This year in 87, you get a great deal more competition. Uh, you have an all-new Suzuki this year that has a much racier motor that was much, you know, while still not an RM engine, it does have a power valve. They added a, a sixth gear, which was a disadvantage the first quad racer had versus the Honda. And you have the Kawasaki Takati 4 making its debut here as well, which was, again, a more, I guess, hard edge, you know, quote-unquote racier version of the uh, quad ethos it uses a kips equipped motor the chassis is kind of taller and narrower i think the steering geometry is a little more aggressive than the honda uh, as i said this is a machine that's designed for doing a little bit of everything the, the honda was excellent in the desert a lot of guys uh, raced them out there and the machine was very stable but it wasn't as maybe as nimble in the turns as the kawasaki or even the suzuki in 1987 the suspension is still rated the best in the class. Uh, overall travel and everything is identical as it was in 86. Uh, really, the only main difference is some small internal changes in the engine. They do add uh, a keyed ignition here for 87, which is a nice little tidbit. Uh, if you're worried about somebody stealing your, your four tracks, you could certainly now take a key with you, which was uh, probably nice if you're parking it in the dunes or someplace. You don't want somebody to make off with your, your quad. Uh, overall sales, interestingly, are about half of what they were in 1986 at 18,000 units. Uh, this might be due to the incredible interest in the original 86. Also could be due to the greater competition here in 87. And as I said, there's a fair amount of heat coming down in the industry at this point uh, from you know the government about the safety of ATVs. And that may have been impacting some of this. I'm not sure. But uh, certainly it is worth noting that they only sold half as many uh, 250Rs here in 87 as they did in 86. Here for 1988, we get the first major redesign of the 4Trax 250R. This machine is all new, pretty much from the ground up. You have an all new frame here in 88. It's similar in overall design to 87, but it does have uh, different geometry. You also have a all new swing arm. The first swing arm in 86 and 87 was a steel constructed unit. Here for 1988, you get an all new aluminum one that is one inch shorter. Uh, as I said, the one complaint that people had in terms of handling on the first 250R uh, was the its propensity to spin out in turns. The wheelbase was a little bit long for motocross use. Uh, while that was great, you know, like in the desert and places like that, it made the quad a little less nimble than some of the competition. And here for 1988, Honda took that to heart and shortened the wheelbase by an inch to improve handling. Um, the motor is new this year, although it's not really a whole lot different. There's a new cylinder. They added another uh, bridge to... Uh, the ports to aid reliability, change the overall porting, but the motor itself is not really different in design. It still has no power valve. Uh, the overall design of it is the same as 87. You do have a larger intake uh, track for increased airflow. You have some new reads here for 88, uh, but the motor itself isn't a whole lot different overall. Uh, the suspension is the same in terms of travels, exactly the same as it was in 1986 and 87. That means 9.1 inches of travel in the rear and 7.9 inches up front. Uh, the shocks in the front are only adjustable for preload, but in the back you do have a fully adjustable uh, hydraulic damper with compression and rebound damping. The major difference in terms of handling here, aside from the shorter wheelbase, is all new tires. And this was a big deal in 1988. Honda went to an Otsu, I think that's how you say that, Otsu uh, set of radials here on the uh, TRX 250R. And this is the first machine I believe that had the radial tires at the time. Now, I, I personally never liked any of these stock ones. Uh, I had the 87 with the standard bias ply ones. And then my buddy had the 88. Actually, I've ridden that quite a bit as well. And I never cared for either one of these tires. I think these are basically the same tires, probably my 400EX that came with brand new in 2000. And I found them to roll over a little bit in turns. And I always went with like an ITP hole shot or something aftermarket that has a stiffer sidewall to it. Um, I will say that the magazines say these are probably an improvement in terms of 
you know, traction out of turns, but they tend to roll over a little bit and they weren't uh, great tires. I think most of the time, you know, depending on the kind of riding you're doing, you would have been better off putting some aftermarket meets on any of these quads. But um, I think overall, this is probably an improvement. The The quad this year was much less likely to spin out in turns. Uh, the shorter wheelbase and the change in tires did improve that. The motor itself does not feel much different. Uh, like I said, I, I've ridden them both, and there's really just not much difference in terms of the overall feel. Uh, Conda claimed a 1.5 horsepower increase here uh, for 1988, but really, from you see to your pants, I, I can't really tell. It just feels like a you know felt like a nice running 87 to me when I rode it. Uh, the quad is very quiet again. Uh, the motor is very smooth. Like I said, a long, strong electric style of power band. Uh, nothing that's going to scare or intimidate anyone in stock condition, at least. Uh, brakes on these are excellent for the time. You have triple hydraulic disc brakes on all these four tracks, 250Rs, and they're excellent in terms of braking control. Fit and finish, of course, is excellent as well. These quads were extremely well put together. Uh, visually, the 88 model looks very different. That's probably actually maybe the biggest difference between the two. More than the uh, underskin look is the uh, appearance. You get the all-new blood-red color combo here for 88, which I actually at the time I wasn't a giant fan of, but I love now. Uh, it is a good-looking quad. I like the graphics quite a bit. Uh, one complaint with the first 86 and 87 was the ergonomics were a little bit cramped on it. The seat was pretty low in stock condition, and when you went from seating to standing on the first one, even my 87, it was definitely uh, much more of a task than it was like on my 400EX or some of the other quads I've had, like the Z400 Suzuki's and stuff, which had a little more uh, taller seating position. And even compared to the Takati 4 and the quad race at the time, some people complained that the Honda was a little bit low in the seat. So here for 88, they added some additional foam and raised the seat a little bit to make it easier to stand up. Overall feel on the chassis, though, is very similar to the year before. Uh, the quad is... Probably not as different in terms of performance as it is in terms of looks. Other than the shorter wheelbase, it doesn't perform a whole lot different. If you had your 87, you put an aftermarket uh, swing arm on it and upgraded the tires, uh, you pretty much were going to have the 88's uh, performance in most ways. I think most people probably think this is the best looking of the four tracks. Is it's a really good looking look, I think, this year. I will say that the, the change to the headlight built into the cowl is probably, while certainly sleeker, is less practical. I always liked riding my quads at night, and having the handlebar mounted headlight was way better in terms of uh, at least in the you know tight trails and stuff. You want to be able to see where you're pointing, but um, I'm sure it probably saved Honda five cents and uh, two ounces going to the cowl mounted here for 1988. Of interest as well as the sales figures here for 88. This all new machine ticked the sales up considerably, back up to 25,000 units. Still not as much as the 35,000 in 86, but certainly an improvement of uh, you know several thousand uh, units over 87 uh, so the new look definitely made a big difference here in 1988 even with all this update in equipment uh, the 88 model was only $200 more than 1987 in 87 the four tracks 250r retailed for $27.98 and uh, here in 1988 it went for $29.98 which seems like a damn good deal in my book for 1989, the Four Tracks 250R was back with what would turn out to be its last year of production. Sadly, the Four Tracks only built these four years in the late 80s, and uh, this would see the end of the line for Honda's high performance two stroke 250. This is an interesting year because the quad itself doesn't get really much in the way of changes this year. There's a slight change to the front hubs, and you do get uh, a really nice little guard here to prevent you from running your leg over. I will say those are always nice. I appreciated that having run my leg over many times riding three wheelers early on in my off-road career. Uh, other than that, there isn't any major mechanical updates here for 1989. The plastic is white this year. Depending on your opinion, that may or may not be an improvement. I personally much prefer the 1988 look in red, but it definitely sets this machine apart visually. The really big change, though, is in the pocketbook here for 1989. This is an interesting year for Honda in that all their machines took a whopping increase in price this year. Uh, there was a problem with the exchange rate back in 88, 89, and Honda, across the board, jacked the prices up of their CRs and their off-road machines uh, huge amounts. Uh, the Honda 4Trax 250R went from uh, $2,900 to just over $4,000 in one year. Uh, that's an $1,100 increase, 36%, which is pretty eye-popping uh, when you consider they didn't really do anything except swap out for some white plastic. It was all due to exchange rate problems. Uh, really, really hard in the pocketbook this year, and it shows in the sales. Uh, as I said, in 1988, 
They sold 25,000 uh, 250Rs. In 1989, Honda only sold 9,200. So a tremendous drop. By far the least amount of any of the years the 250R was in production. And that's even more remarkable when you realize that they lost a lot of competition this year. Uh, the Kawasaki Takati 250 was dropped by uh, Kawasaki. And really the only competition with the 250R is the um, Quad Racer 250, which was about $600 less expensive. So in spite of the increase in the yen, the uh, Honda certainly jacked their prices across the board. The same thing happened in the motocross realm. Uh, all the manufacturers raised their prices somewhat in 89, but Honda, they took like a $1,000 increase to their uh, like the CRs as well as this four tracks. And it really made it a little bit tougher, I think, to make that decision as to which one to go with. You could buy a lot of aftermarket goodies for your quad racer in 1989, you know, to offset that $600. The quad itself is still an excellent performer, same as the year before. Uh, I think most people still think it is the, maybe the best quad ever produced, probably until the four strokes finally kind of took over in the early 2000s. People were still racing these things, you know, for well over a decade after they went out of production just because this is kind of the high watermark. Yamaha was really the only holdout to keep making high-performance ATVs after all the heat in the late 80s. I think some of this had to do with the pressure that Honda was getting. I've read some different reports. I've talked to a few people in the industry to try and figure out if anybody has any real insight as to why exactly Honda discontinued the quad. Because i got to think that there was still a huge market out there for them. But I understand they were getting not only heat from the government, there was also a lot of lawsuits going on at the time. I've read that there was maybe some agreement with uh, the federal government here in the U.S. to give them a better break on some tax rates on cars if they stop, you know, building these high-performance ATVs that were causing so much controversy. I don't know how much of that was true. I certainly think uh, they did agree to discontinue the three-wheelers, uh, but it's not like four-wheelers got banned. You know, like I said, the Banshee was still in production all through the 90s and into the 2000s. It was just Suzuki and uh, Honda chose to pull out. Suzuki kept going with the quad racer, I think, until 92 was the last year. And then, uh, of course, this Honda 89 is the last. Really a bummer, though, because this these were great quads. And certainly, I think most people think of them really fondly. It's just interesting that uh, in spite of the fact that they... I don't think these were inherently dangerous. They certainly weren't, you know, like a CR500 or something. Like, if you ride one of these, they're not going to, you know, yank your arms out of your socket. They're not, you know, like, crazy, scary machines. In fact, they handle better than a lot of the um, less powerful machines that don't have the excellent brakes and suspension. So they probably were safer in most ways than some of the quote-unquote less high-performance quads. But high-performance stuff here in the late 80s was uh, getting pretty tough. There's, Like I said, there's a lot of pressure on that from the public and the government uh, to try and scale it back. And I guess that's probably had more to do with why Honda discontinued this machine than anything. Uh, I think if they had kept updating it, it would have continued to be a big hit through the 90s. But unfortunately, this is the end of the line for the 250R, and that's probably only added to its legend as time has gone on. So there you have it. That's a look back at the Honda 4Trax 250R, a machine that only made it four years of production, but is still, as I said, well beloved by many, so many people to this day. Great, great overall quads. And I said, you know, people still love them and race them and ride them to this very day. I wish Honda would bring back something like this, but of course, they've given up on two strokes a long time ago. And I think, unfortunately, we'll probably never see this uh, machine come back, but that's uh, certainly one worth looking back at. If you like this sort of thing, make sure you check out some of the other videos I've done. If you can share, subscribe, and uh, let your friends know on social media help grow the channel, I would very much appreciate it. So until we meet again, this is Tony Blazer for the Motocross Vault. Keep the rubber side down. Peace.